All right, let's get in the word concerning leadings and perceptions. Romans chapter 8 verse number 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We've established that it is very vital for a believer to know how to receive guidance in the world. How to receive guidance in the world. Look at that Romans chapter 8 verse 15 and 16. Romans 8, 15 and 16. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The fact that as a child of God, you must be able to understand how God intends to lead you through life. So you can live a life of victory. You can live a life of, you know, total triumph. You can live a life of fulfillment. It's unfortunate that many people go through life, you know, totally empty till they die. Never fulfilled. And many go through life without knowing why they actually came. And some people go through life, they think what they came to do was to eat, drink, marry, have children, make a little money here and there, buy a house and a car that they will die and live here, go to the best schools, get all the degrees that they will die and live here, and just go empty. Nothing they lived for. The mystery of life is that you can go through this life and when you die, when you leave this world, few months after, people never, people never remember that you were here. People never do. You have forgotten. The only thing that speaks for you, if any, is the impact you made on people. The impact. Even your houses, they will change certificate of ownership. They will change the land title. They will change the names. You know, even if you had a monument, it will be abandoned if care is not taken. The only thing people will remember you for at all is the impact, the things you imprinted on them whether temporal or eternal. That's all they'll remember you for. And what will last much more is the eternal impact. People you got saved, people you discipled, people you built up for the kingdom of God because the word of God abides forever. So the person that communicated the word to people will be remembered forever by the people whose lives you affected. But other things, titles, positions, influences money nobody's going to remember you for all of that except maybe the people whom you paid their school fees paid give them scholarship people that you were able to you know help them go through life you know pay help their parents help the children they will remember you of course for those good deeds you did for them but you see again even that ends in this world they will not go to eternity telling jesus it was that man that paid my fees they will not go to eternity telling Jesus it was that man that used to give us food to eat because there will be no relevance of food. School fees will not be relevant when we get to eternity. The only thing that will be relevant in eternity is the gospel you preach, the disciples you raise, and the impact of God's word you distributed all over the planet. That's all that will matter. Any other thing you just on your own. Now, that is why it is important for you to understand that God has a plan, God has a purpose for your life, and you need to follow that plan and purpose of God. Now, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. So he says, Christ has been made unto us wisdom. If he says Christ has been made unto us the wisdom of God, which is the Greek word Sophia. What about James chapter 1 verse 5? If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given to him, or it shall be given him. Lack wisdom, Christ is made unto us wisdom. So some people believe that Christ has been made unto us wisdom, so they don't lack wisdom, they can never lack wisdom. But remember, brother Paul's prayer in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him.
Next verse. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So brother Paul was praying prayers for wisdom for the church at Ephesus. He was praying prayers of wisdom for believers who are already born again in Christ Jesus. So the first question you want to ask is, what wisdom was 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 referring to? Now, backtrack, he was talking about the wisdom of Christ's redemptive sacrifice. The wisdom of Christ's redemptive sacrifice or the wisdom of the redemption that Christ has provided for us. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24 so it will be clear. Same context. 1 Corinthians 1 24. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. So wisdom there is Christ's redemption. That is the insight of God or what God sees. What God sees. That is man saw something else. The Greeks saw the wisdom of God as foolishness. That's what they saw. The Jews saw the wisdom of God as a stumbling block. But to us, it is the wisdom of God. Talking about the crucifixion of Christ. So that is why in verse 30, he now says, Christ is made unto us. That is, the cross of Christ is made unto us wisdom. The cross of Christ is made unto us righteousness. The cross of Christ is made unto us redemption. The cross of Christ is made unto us sanctification. So he's not talking about wisdom for living. He is talking about the wisdom of redemption. So brother James and Paul were not contradicting themselves. Brother Paul will not say Christ is made unto us. While brother James is saying ask for wisdom. The wisdom James was asking for is the same prayer Paul prayed for Ephesus. The wisdom for daily living to be able to live in the purpose and counsel of God. Brother Paul after saying that he now says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 pay attention. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So brother Paul enumerates these blessings. Verse 4. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. That's one of the blessings. Verse 5. He has predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. So we are adopted. Verse 6. Look at what it says. Verse 6 is the blessing. To the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. We are accepted in the beloved. Verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. All of these are the blessings we have in Christ Jesus. Look at verse number 8. Now verse 8. He now says wherein he had abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. He has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. But then having abounded unto us in all wisdom and prudence, he now tells you that you should pray that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that God will grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So you can see that they are talking about two kinds of wisdom. The wisdom of God in redemption and James is talking about wisdom for daily living. Or wisdom to go through this life fulfilling the purpose of God for your life. Now James prayer in James chapter 1 verse 5 is the same as Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. It's just that the prayer in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 and 18 has more details more details the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know the hope of your calling that you may know the riches of his inheritance among the saints that you may know the exceeding greatness of his power to us word according according to the according to the riches of his grace 
that you may know that power, the exceeding greatness of his power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. But notice again that when Brother Paul got to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Verse 6 now. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. So at this point, he is talking about the wisdom of Christ's death. The wisdom of Christ's death. Look at verse 7. He says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So he says, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery that had the princes of this world known, they wouldn't have crucified. So that wisdom is the wisdom of Christ's redemption. They wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. The wisdom of the death of Christ. So you don't claim you have wisdom when you are actually foolish. Because Galatian church, Christ was made unto them wisdom. But brother Paul called them foolish Galatians. Are you so foolish? Christ was made to his disciples wisdom at the point of, of resurrection. But he called them fools and slow of heart. To believe all that the prophets have spoken. So there are two dimensions of wisdom. The wisdom of God in redemption and wisdom for daily living. Look at Acts chapter 6 verse 3. Wherefore brethren, looking out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Look out for men full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. All of them should have been full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Why do they have to look for? He's not talking about the wisdom of salvation and redemption. He's talking about wisdom for living. Wisdom for living. Men full of insight, wisdom. Insight in God's word. So we pray and we seek for insight in God's word. Insight into who we are in Christ. Insight into what we have in Christ. So 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 refers to the wisdom of God in redemption or the wisdom of Christ's death, which was hidden before the foundation of the world. We have that wisdom, that is why we are born again. If you didn't have that wisdom, you will not be born again. You are born again because you have wisdom. That is why it is called see, the hidden wisdom, hidden wisdom. And then in, in verse 13 of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he now says comparing spiritual with spiritual. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And if you remember, we said it's the word sukrino, sukrino, S-U-G-K-R-I-N-O, sukrino. Krino means judgment. Krino means knowledge. Krino means discernment. Things like that. So when you say suk Crino, it means to identify with. Sug, identify with. To know with. So he's saying that when he is teaching, he is identifying the man that is born again with the spirit of God in the things of the spirit. He is identifying the man that is born of the spirit in the things of the spirit. Comparing spiritual with spiritual. Identifying the man that is born of the spirit in the things of the spirit. That's the word compare. It is identifying by knowledge. The man who is born of the spirit in the things of the spirit. We are known by the things revealed by the spirit of God. Please pay attention. The things revealed by the spirit of God are the things that belong to us. The things revealed by the Spirit of God are the things that belong to us. You cannot know what belongs to you unless they are revealed by the Spirit of God because you are born of the Spirit. So whatever is spoken in the Spirit 
belongs to the man that is born of the spirit. Whatever is spoken of the spirit belongs to the man that is born of the spirit. So the man born of the spirit no longer receives information. The man born of the spirit no longer receives information. He stands in the stead of the revealer of the truth. He stands in the stead of the revealer of the truth. So he does not receive information. The born again man does not receive information. He stands in the stead of the revealer of the truth. Notice he didn't say the spirit receives information. He says we have received. We have received. That means the spirit that knows. We have received. The spirit that knows. We do not receive information because we have the spirit that knows. We are standing in the stead of the spirit that knows. That we might know. So, we might know is not the spirit. That we might know refers to our understanding. We already have the spirit that knows. And because we have the spirit that knows, by the spirit that knows, we now have understanding of the things that the spirit knows. That we might know, that we might comprehend, that we might appreciate the things freely given to us of God. So the first thing we realize is that insight is in our spirit. Insight is in our spirit. Every believer has insight in his spirit. Everybody said me very loud, I have insight in my spirit. Can I hear you again? I have insight in my spirit now say like you know what you're talking about i have insight in my spirit right now our our why will romans chapter 8 verse 16 you know say the spirit be as witness with our our spirit likewise the spirit itself be as witness with our spirit that we are the children of god our there will be a joint identification. Our. So just like he says, the same spirit of Christ, the same spirit of God, he now calls it our spirit. The same spirit of Christ, the same spirit of God is now our spirit. Our spirit. That is when he says, be a witness, is the word sun materio, sun materio, S-U-N-M-A-T-U-R-E-O. It means joint witness, joint witness, sun materio, joint witness. So that already shows you that our spirit is of God. So the hour, God is inclusive. Our spirit. Joint identification. <laughs> Somebody said I was heretic because I said your spirit is the Holy Spirit. That that's heresy. So I asked him, are you a monster? Do you have two spirits? Your own spirit and spirit of God inside you as two spirits? Only a monster has two heads. The spirit, our spirit, is joint identification. Meaning the same spirit in God is the same spirit in me. So brother Paul says, likewise the spirit also bears witness with our joint identification. Is the same spirit. <laughs> Glory to God. 
People have a lot of learning to do, man. How many of you have observed? How many of you have observed? Well, if your hand is not up, it means you've not been going for evangelism. How many of you have observed that people have a lot of relearning to do? Yeah. A lot of it. If your hand is not up, I put it to you without a word of knowledge. You have not been evangelized. Once you start evangelizing, you will see the darkness in people. In, in fact, the church people are darker than unbelievers. Is it not true? They are darker than unbelievers. A lot of church people. Because they think they know, but what they even know, they don't know it. Unbelievers at least agree that they don't know. Show us. So their own darkness is closer to light. But believers, a lot of people in churches, their own darkness is thick darkness. Thick. Because when you are now showing them, they now are displaying darkness before you as light. You even show them in black and white in the Bible, they still argue. For example, somebody is arguing that you can lose salvation. What? Do you know that salvation is the Holy Spirit? How can you lose the Holy Spirit? How can you lose the Holy Spirit? Salvation is the Holy Spirit. Salvation is not an item on the shelf. Salvation is a person. The Spirit of God. So even when you show them, they still argue. You know? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 12. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Next verse. In whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. The moment you believe the guarantee for that salvation is the Holy Spirit. Salvation is not like a, a pencil or a biro <laughs> that you bought, so you lost it. Uh -uh. Salvation is Christ in you. Salvation is the seal of the Spirit. Give me that verse 13 again. Give me the amplified of verse 13. Ephesians 1, 13, amplified. Please pay attention. In him, you also who have heard the word of truth, the glad tidings, gospel of your salvation. And have believed in and adhered to and relied on him. We are stamped with the seal of the long promised Holy Spirit. Look at verse 14 now. That spirit is a guarantee of our inheritance. The first fruits, the pledge and foretaste. The down payment on our heritage in anticipation of his full redemption. And our acquiring complete possession of it. To the praise of his glory. So the guarantee for rapture is that you have the Holy Spirit. How many of you have the Holy Spirit? Once you have the Holy Spirit, you are rapture ready. Now, John 10, 28, amplified. Can we read, everybody? And I give them eternal life. And they shall never, they shall never, they shall never, they shall never. Can a believer lose salvation? Now, but you do you know if you show them this, they'll say, What of? See, see, see the level of darkness. They read it, they shall never lose it in black and white. What of Judas? Is your name Judas? Even if your name is Judas, are you that Judas? They shall never lose it. They shall never lose it. Because they shall never lose it. That's after Peter denied Jesus three times. You know. In the Old Testament, Elisha gave Gehazi leprosy. In the New Testament, Peter betrayed Jesus three times. Jesus made him the leader of the church. You didn't hear. They shall never lose it. They shall never lose it. They shall never lose it or perish throughout the ages to all eternity. They shall never by any means be destroyed. And no one is able to snatch them out of my hand. You just missed a place to shout some crazy shout. 
When you show them in black and white, they say, what about? What about? Who has cheated your mouth with what about? Are you now saying? <laughs> yes, I am saying. Since you will lose your own, be losing it. <laughs> your own, you can lose it. My own is not my own. My own is his own. And is a guarantee and the guarantor of that salvation. Can somebody shout hallelujah? So he says, the spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. That spirit is our spirit. Look at 1 Corinthians 6, 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Say with me very loud, everybody. I am one spirit with him. Say it again. Let the devil hear you loud and clear. So therefore, it is necessary that we know that none of God's leadings comes from outside you. None of God's leadings comes from outside you. I repeat, it is important to know that none of God's leadings comes from outside you. Even when you had the cause to have appearances, divinely granted appearances like visions, carefulness is required. Even Brother Paul, when he said he was caught to the third heaven, when he showed up, he didn't say what he saw. He said the things he saw are unlawful for the mouth to utter. That is safer. All these people that keep dying and going to heaven and coming back, it's safer for them to come back and shut up. It's safer. I heard about a woman who said she went to heaven and saw Jesus. Wherever they went, they were the only ones who went. And that Jesus said to her, if you don't tie it, you are living in disobedience. And you are out of the will of God. <laughs> if you don't pay tight, you are living in disobedience. And you are out of the will of God. Wow. Did you observe, everybody listen carefully. Now put on your thinking caps. Did you observe that the spirit of truth used the word tight only for history? The spirit of truth. That is, it is not a word to reveal all the truth. Tight. It's not a word to reveal all the truth. Look at what Jesus said in John chapter 16 verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Next verse. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all the truth. He will guide you into all the truth. He will guide you into all the truth. So, the spirit of truth brought all the truth. And in the things that the spirit of truth brought, he never used the word tight. In the things that the spirit of truth brought, he never used the word tight. In John 16, 12, he said, you cannot bear them now. So when the spirit of truth brought all the truth to the people of truth, there was no tithe there. So there's no truth in tithe. There's no truth in tithe. When the spirit of truth was going to talk to us about giving, he said, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. That ye through his poverty might be rich. That ye through his poverty might be rich. Those are the words of truth. The words of truth says that the grace of our Lord Jesus is that he was rich. But for your sake he became poor. So the spirit of truth reveals that in giving, you deprive yourself to enrich God's purpose or to be a blessing to somebody. So in giving, I'm not giving to get. I'm giving so you can get. In giving, I'm not accumulating. I'm distributing. That is the truth about giving. 
that the giver is the beneficiary. And my joy is that I help somebody meet a need. My benefit in my giving is that when I gave to you, your fees were paid and you went to school. You going to school is my reward. My reward is not that I gave and it came back. Uh -uh. My reward is in the benefit, the value that my giving brought to your life to make you better. That's my reward. Am I talking to somebody here? That's what the spirit of truth brought. That through my giving, radio broadcast is on. And families and millions in Aquaibom are being enriched with the word of God. You gave and the gospel got to people that you will never be till you die. Your reward in the giving is that the kingdom of God is being multiplied in the heart of millions all over the world. When you see that, that is the benefit of your giving. It's not accumulation. Accumulation is materialistic. The spirit of truth is about depriving myself to enrich you. He was rich for your sake. He became poor. In his poverty, you became rich. Am I teaching good? So the grace of our Lord Jesus is that I deprive myself to enrich you. That is the truth about giving. That is all the truth about giving. You know, when you have a vision, how I many of you know you didn't travel anywhere in a vision? Wait. How I many of you know that when you have a vision, you didn't travel anywhere? Huh? <laughs> you are here now. You close your eyes. Whatever you saw, you saw it sitting here. You didn't travel anywhere. When brother Paul said, whether in the body I cannot tell or out of the body I cannot tell. I know that if Paul was talking about his encounter in Acts chapter 9, I will tell him, I know that that encounter, you had it in your body. Acts 9, when he saw the light and fell down, he was in his body. But if he was talking about Acts chapter 14, when he was stoned, I will say, well, he left temporarily and came back because they stoned him to death. He collapsed. They left. After a while, he came back to his body, stood up and went to teach. He went to do what? Living a life of purpose. He didn't stand up to look for food or injection. He went straight to teach. You don't have to leave your body to see things in the spirit. Are you aware that Stephen was still talking when they were stoning him, he saw heaven open. He was still in his body and he said, I see heaven open. All visions are activities here within your body. The reason why you have to close your eyes, lose consciousness... And all of that is because your body is mortal. But you know, the out-of-body experience is a world where you have always been in. It's a world you've always been in. Don't think that you're ever going to hear a voice. And I mean, if you know, most men of God or people tell you that they had God say, my, my, my son, my son, my son, my son, or you know, man of God. Or God said, my son, reverend doctor. If you observe in the epistles, God never speaks to people using my son. Ezekiel, Paul, stand up, Peter, Isaiah. Paul, check the pattern that God uses in speaking in scripture. When somebody is telling you God spoke to him, if he doesn't agree with that pattern, look at him somehow. 
Because God does not change. He has no shadow of turning. There's consistency in how he operates. God and his word are the same. God and his word. And he lives in you forever. Let's assume in this instance that there's a place called heaven in the spirit. And God is there. Eh? Hello? Let's assume, for instance, that there's a place in the spirit called heaven. And God is there. Even if there is such a place, it's not greater than you. Because any place there that can accommodate God... It's not greater than you because he also lives in you. Nothing has changed. So you don't have to leave your body. You know, in the Old Testament, they dealt with pictures and symbols. That's the way communication was done to carnal men. But the spirit of truth just speaks words. The spirit of truth just speaks words. The spirit of truth does not expect you to have pictures. Listen carefully, everybody. Visions are the lowest level of revelation. Visions are the lowest level of revelation. Hearing the voice of God is the lowest level of revelation. Unbelievers had the voice of God in the Old Testament. Unbelievers had the voice of God in the Old Testament. So don't let people intimidate you by saying, God just spoke to me. Or I just saw something. Don't let those things intimidate you because those are the lowest realms of communication. Meanwhile, some people think when you say I just saw a vision or I had a voice, they are mighty men of God. No, those are the lowest levels. Visions, voice. So what is the big deal about the New Testament? The big deal is that they shall know me from the least to the greatest. They shall know me. It's not that they shall hear my voice or see a vision. They shall know me from the least to the greatest of them. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10, 11 and 12. They shall know me. You know in John chapter 12 verse 28... When God spoke to Jesus, some said it thundered. And others said it was an angel. So when somebody say, I just had a voice, don't be shaken by him. Don't be intimidated. Because we know the things of God. Hallelujah. I say we know the things of God. So whatever visions they are, is still the spirit which is of God. Same with the incarnation. The incarnation is God in a man or man in God. Remember, we have a man like God. That's what we have in Christ. A man like God. We know. That means the activity of our spirit carries insight. Knowledge. The activities of our spirit carries insight. And that's what we want to examine the next few weeks. Everybody said to me very loud, the activity of my spirit carries insight. Say it again one more time. Did you observe that all the questions people ask for in the Bible is about doctrine? Doctrine. They never ask questions of who do I marry? Where do I travel to? All Bible questions, if you study the Bible, they were all doctrinally related. You have the spirit which is of God, so you know the things of God. Say with me, I have the spirit which is of God, so I know the things of God. Now say like you know what you're talking about, I know the things of God, because I have the spirit which is of God. Now look at what Paul writes. 1 Corinthians 12, 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, 
I will not have you ignorant concerning the things of the spirit. I will not have you ignorant concerning the things of the spirit. The spirit which we have received of God huh? Huh? concerning the things of the spirit or the spirit which we have received of God that we may know all things which are of God I will not have you ignorant. Con listen carefully. Concerning the things of the spirit the spirit which we have received of God that we might know all things which are of God I will not have you ignorant. So the things of 1 Corinthians 12, 1 are the things of the Spirit which is of God. The things of the Spirit which is of God. So, he mentions some of them, nine of them. Look at verse 4 of 1 Corinthians 12. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Look at verse 3. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a cost, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. So the first thing he says about the things of the Spirit is that no man speaking by the Spirit, no man speaking by the spirit call it jesus a cause did you observe that in first corinthians chapter 2 the whole of chapter 2 and chapter 12 it appears that a primary function of the spirit is speaking a primary function of the spirit is speaking no man speaking by the Spirit of God, no man speaking. So, there's a plainness or there is an emphasis on speaking. Which you will see when Paul was speaking. You find out that what Paul was actually saying was emphasizing. And he was emphasizing speaking, speaking. Speaking, speaking, speaking. So he mentions tongues from verse 8 to 10. Tongues, an interpretation of tongues. He mentions prophecy, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. Remember, we are talking about leadings and perceptions. When he was through with that, he now went into ministries and operations which ended in verse 31. He now says, covet endlessly the best gifts. And if you remember, I told you that the best gifts are the utterance gifts. Did I say that? The best gifts are the utterance gifts because the word best is the word greater. The word greater. Covet endlessly the best gifts which are the utterance gifts. Now follow this. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. For no man understandeth how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Look at me everybody. If he calls something the gifts of the spirit or the gifts or the same spirit. Gifts gifts of the spirit or the same spirit the moment it is given it becomes he that speaketh the spirit the same spirit he didn't say when the spirit is speaking it is gifted to me so when I speak, it is the spirit speaking. The spirit cannot speak. I have to speak. 
But the spirit in me speaking. Same spirit. The same spirit. Charisma. Now so when we receive the spirit. Who does the speaking? Huh? You do the speaking. Like Paul says. Words which we speak. Because your spirit is our spirit. Your spirit is the spirit of God. So look at 1 Corinthians 14 2 again. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God, for no man understandeth. How be it in the spirit he is speaking mysteries. For no man understands. In the spirit he speaks. He speaks. He mentions speaks three times in that verse. Three times. Look at how he uses mystery in that book. First Corinthians 2 6. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. We speak wisdom. The word wisdom is the Greek word Sophia. Which means inside. We speak inside. We speak inside. We speak inside. Look at verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The word musterion. Musterion. So when he uses wisdom or mystery, mystery there is the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. Look at 1 Corinthians 2 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. So you find the word mystery. Which is the wisdom of God hidden from the mind of man? Mystery, the wisdom of God hidden from the mind of man. And this mystery is different from the wisdom of man. This mystery or the wisdom of God is insight, insight into God's purpose and plan. Insight into God's purpose and plan. Insight into God's knowledge. Insight into God's knowledge. And he calls it wisdom. So, 1 Corinthians 14, 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. How be it in the spirit? What spirit? Huh? The spirit which is my spirit. In the spirit. The spirit which is my spirit. Verse 14. First Corinthians 14, 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayed. Did you see that? The spirit or what? My spirit. But my understanding is unfruitful. My spirit. Question. So is the spirit my spirit? Or our spirit? Huh? My spirit? Our spirit? The spirit, hey, 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 is the spirit our spirit? Is the spirit my spirit? Which is the spirit of God? Which is the Holy Ghost? Which is the spirit of Christ? Which is the spirit of adoption? How be it in the spirit which is my spirit? 
I speak what? Mysteries. So mystery is where? In my spirit, which is the spirit. Is it getting clear? So which means when I'm speaking in tongues, what am I speaking? Which is what? Undisclosed wisdom. Undisclosed wisdom. Mystery. On, that is a gabato mingle in a matter. I just spoke solution. I just spoke direction, but undisclosed. Hey, speak in tongues to me very loud, everybody. Hold it. Where are you speaking from? Which is your spirit, which is the spirit, which is our spirit. How be it in the spirit, which is your spirit, he speaketh what? What is mystery? Undisclosed wisdom. So when you speak, what are you speaking? From where? Your spirit, which is the spirit. Wisdom for what? Health, marriage, business, career, job. That complication, that health challenge, the moment you go, man grand only, you just spoke the solution to that health challenge which the doctor doesn't have. The moment you, a gamma you have left medical science, you have left engineering, you have left economics, you have left accounting. The moment you, man grand only, you have gone beyond the realms of men. He speaketh not to man, for no man understandeth. How be it? He is operating at the realm of immortality. <laughs> so in my spirit is what? Huh? What is contained in my spirit? Mystery. Undisclosed wisdom. Why is it a mystery? Huh? Power city, why is it a mystery? No man. But is it not a mystery to me? Huh? It's not a mystery to me. Because I know the things which are of God. But it is a mystery to the mind of man. That's why I say no man understands. Me speaking, I'm not man. You're getting this? So I speak the wisdom of God. Can I hear you say that three times? Two times. The last one. So let's go back a bit and look at the word tongues. Tongues refers to a mode of communication. Tongues refers to a mode of communication. So let's deal with this. What is the reason for language? Huh? To convey a thought. The reason for language is to convey a thought. Which means that words carry thoughts. Words carry thoughts. Ideas. Words carry thoughts, ideas, and things. Words carry plans, purposes, motives. And that is the essence of language. Words carry thoughts, ideas, and things, plans, purposes, motives. That's the essence of language. That means when I am speaking with tongues, 
I am carrying an information. I am conveying a thought or an idea. I am conveying a plan or a purpose. From where? Huh? From our spirit. From the spirit. From my spirit. So that means that tongues, if it is a language, which it is, is a container. Tongues are containers. Tongues are containers. Can I have somebody who speaks Ibibio step up here? If you speak Ibibio very well, step up here. Yoruba, any good Yoruba speaking person? Yoruba, any good Yoruba speaking person? Come. Any good Igbo speaking person? Igbo. Any Hausa speaking person? Hausa. Good Hausa speaking. Okay, stand. Face the congregation, don't face me. Face the church. Now, now, I'm going to whisper something in your ears. You speak it in the language and the people in the audience that understand that language, I'd like you to respond. Give me a mic. So, when they speak, if you understand what they are saying, respond. If you don't understand, just be looking. In Kana Kauna Yesu Tashi Kai Ihu. Aboroni Horochine Kanaya Tupo Pagi. I put on the name of Jesus. Now look what he said. To ba fer na Jesus na wa is okay. Now, what did they just do? They conveyed a thought, and those of you that did not understand became barbarians, and those who understood. When the thought was conveyed, you responded to that thought. Is that true? Yes, so language is used to convey thought. But those who didn't understand could not respond. He that speaketh in tongues speaketh not to man, for no man understandeth. How be it? In the spirit, he just communicated an undisclosed information. Those who don't understand is undisclosed, but to those who understand is disclosed. So, those who don't understand Hausa, when he spoke Hausa, that was a mystery. Those who don't understand Igbo, when she spoke Igbo, it was a mystery. Those who don't understand Ibibio, when he spoke Ibibio, it was a mystery. Those who don't understand Yoruba, when he spoke Yoruba, it was a mystery. That means he conveyed thought. But you didn't get it. The fact that you didn't understand doesn't mean he wasn't talking. The fact that you don't understand doesn't mean he was talking nonsense. So the fact that people don't understand what we are speaking does not mean we are speaking nonsense. Zazo Bianaka. Tell your neighbor I'm not speaking nonsense. I'm conveying a plan, a purpose, solution direction a thought an idea a concept an answer to the questions of life i know them in my spirit so i bring it out and if you have understanding you get the answers but if you don't i am still saying something clap for them clap for them now clap for them and go, i'm going somewhere with this now so can we speak in tongues for 30 seconds everybody Now hold it. You are not understanding does not make what you are saying void.
How did you know what they said? Because you understood. Understanding is perception. Understanding is perception. It does not define what is said. Because all of them, what they said, carried a thought. What they said carried a thought. If you're Yoruba, the moment we speak Hausa, it becomes a mystery. Because that's not the way you speak. So language is actually your own way of communicating thoughts. Your own thoughts. But either way, whether you responded or not, they didn't mean that the person wasn't saying something. Are we together here? So when I'm speaking, it carries something. It carries an information. That information could be a thought, an idea, or a fact. So why do we interpret tongues? For the mind to be able to communicate what the spirit has said. So, interpretation of tongue is the mind to the mind by the spirit. The mind to the mind. When I know, I say from my mind to others. You know? Oh, the Lord just said, the time is here. The time is here. When the things you have desired and expected and waited for suddenly begins to fall in place. I just spoke that by the spirit and I interpreted and those it is meant for have received. So, tongues is a language that contains an information. Question. When I speak with tongues, is it the same spirit? Huh? Yes. What can the spirit utter? The spirit can utter word of knowledge, word of wisdom. A word of knowledge is the Greek word logos gnosis. Logos gnosis. Which is a thought, a fact, or experience. Logos gnosis. A word of knowledge. A fact of an experience. Same spirit. We also have a word of wisdom which points forward. Then the last is discerning of spirit which is not relevant for this particular teaching immediately. So if I take advantage of tongues, I can have knowledge. And I can have wisdom. Like an instruction on what to do. Because the essence of speaking is conveying a thought. An information. A plan. That's the essence of speaking. So when we speak in tongues, it's important to realize that we are speaking solutions answers, directions. We are conveying a plan, a purpose. We are conveying an idea, a fact. When we speak in tongues, we are conveying answers, solutions. A husband and wife sleep in the same room. The husband wakes up and says, darling, they were pursuing me in the dream. The wife sits up and says, I didn't know they pursued me. They were pressing me. You know what the two of them need to do? They need to speak in tongues and interpret. Because when you speak in tongues and interpret, the interpretation will not be pursue or press. The interpretation will be victory. 
So instead of being worried about pursuing the dream, speak in tongues and interpret, and let the interpretation erase the thought of whatever you dreamt. I just said something. You have a dream you don't like, you just sit up, bang, re, de, geng, le, de, boho, because that's the spirit of truth. And when you interpret it, you, that is the truth you're speaking. Your experience is not the truth. It is what the spirit says that is the truth. And the truth will contradict experience. You go to get a job or money and they tell you it, they will not give you. Just step back. Not here. Not here. Not here. Thank you, Lord. So you don't feel bad that they didn't give you money because that is not where the money was coming from. So you leave the place rejoicing instead of leaving the place feeling down. Instead of feeling that you were denied. You just spoke by the spirit and you brought an interpretation. Not here. This is not the place. Thank you, Jesus. That means the money is still somewhere. You keep speaking and as you're speaking, you'll be navigating your path to where the place is. When you get to the place, the spirit will tell you, this is the place. And when you know that that is the place, you will not take a no for an answer. A child of God ought not to be beaten about the bush. A child of God ought to live an informed life. You ought to walk by the spirit. You ought to be ordered by the spirit. A child of God ought not to be doing trial and error. You ought to just stand up and by the spirit walk to the place where God wants you to be at a particular point in time. And get what you're supposed to get. I prophesize your amen will come like thunder. Your days, your days of trial and error are over. If you stand up and shout that amen, I mean they are over. Amen. Say with me, I speak in tongues. I convey thoughts, plans, purposes, direction, solution, answers. I speak the wisdom of God by my spirit right now. I'm not confused. I can never be confused. I didn't hear a powerful amen. How be it in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. As a child of God, you should never be found in the place where you, you start saying, I don't know what to do. I'm so confused. No, that is contrary to your identity. It's contrary to your identity. You are a child of light. And where there is light, there is no darkness. There's no occasion of stumbling. Can somebody shout hallelujah? The next 12 months, I know what to do. I know where to go. I know what not to do. I know how to go about it. I'm not in the dark. I know in the spirit, in my spirit, by my spirit. I speak right now. I shall do exploits. I didn't hear a powerful amen. So my steps are ordered. Say my steps are ordered. Say my mind is informed. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. I just heard God speak to me. Somebody here is coming out of something. You've been praying the last three months that if God can just bring you out. You've been battling so much the past three months. I just saw you now coming out of it. It's a new season for your life. I don't know who I'm speaking to but it's a new season for your life. I speak to you by the spirit of God. Everything that has confused and complicated your life is dissolved right now. It's dissolved right now. I declare that in the name of Jesus, your path is cleared. You can now make progress. You can now make progress. You can now gain speed. Zakota, Kalema. I mean, if you know when you know where to go, you are faster than when somebody is still looking for where to go. Now I declare you know exactly where to go and how to go about it. So all the speed you have lost before now, gain that speed back. I didn't hear that, amen. Gain that speed back. Gain that speed back. Where you need favor, as your amen is coming like thunder, receive favor from every direction. In his time, he makes all things beautiful. There are people hearing the sound of my voice. Your time has come. Zikola. 
Bebriga, Lucada, Zegoda. Your time has come. Who am I talking to in this building? I say your time has come. Your time has come. Your time has come. Barriers are breaking. Obstacles are clearing out of your way. The governor Kalata. I unleash heavy duty angelic activity on your part. Zekotanakas. Zekolanamas. Zekolanamas. Miracles. 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 Receive it in the name of Jesus. Zekolodobosha. Lift your hands and give him praise and give him thanks. Give him praise and give him thanks. Thank you for your word. The days of stagnation and the days of confusion totally dissolved. Thank you for the release. Thank you for clarity. Thank you for direction. Thank you for concepts and insights. Thank you for informed choices and informed decisions. Thank you for victory. Thank you for triumph. Thank you for testimonies. I declare them release. And I decree that you will experience victory like you've never done before. Great grace is upon you. Thank you for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of celebration. Amen. Well, go ahead and celebrate the next 30 seconds. Clap, jump, scream, give him praise. Glory! Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Give him praise. Look ahead of you and see the glory and see the beauty and see the blessing and give him praise. Glory! Amen! Thank you, Lord Jesus. Great days are ahead. The best days are not behind. The best days are in front. Look up, look up, lift up your head and see. The brightest and the most beautiful seasons of your life are still ahead.